Okay, YouTube, we're back again. It's been two days, right, camera crew? I think so. And what we did was we just assembled this uh, six arm rake, which is going to help us to ted or fluff our hay, which is what you do when you cut hay and you let it dry in the sun. Well, you can spread it out or you can put it into windrows and then the rows get picked up by the baler. And this machine, underneath these little safety guards, there's these spinning uh, rake that will pick up and fling the hay. See how as it spins, it changes the position. Mm -hmm. Okay, and so there's the three point here is where you, you hook it up. And then, of course, you got these uh, legs kind of in a shipping setting. There's a bolt here. We'll probably just get some regular pins so it's quick and easy to replace those and bring them up uh, when we hook onto the tractor. And uh, then this wheel down here is allowed to pivot. And so when you need to go in and make an adjustment, then you can just raise this up. You can turn this here. And then this thing here, you pull this pin here, you lift this. This is just a... Uh, just a pin like that. And then this is allows you to make a change on where the machine tips inside this gearbox. What do they call that thing? I don't remember, I just read it. You see that? You see how it's changing the position? So as you go further over here, you're more into the rake. And then over here, you're more into tedding. And I don't know, it's just one of those things that's going to make better sense when we get out and use it a little bit. But you just kind of slide that thing along. And you just drop that down as a retainer. Because everything is going to vibrate like crazy. And then over here, as with the baler, we have this really high quality PTO shaft cover. Look at this, this is crazy. Yeah, super nice. I don't really understand why they're so stinky nice, but that's okay because <laughs> this is going to be covered with grease forever. And I did notice that these are class one pins, which is what we need, but the other one had class two pins, so I'm not sure exactly why that is. The other thing we noticed that we're not going to know if it's going to be a problem yet is that, uh, oh, and we did put in the SAE 90 mm -hmm. oil. One liter There's, of it. The instructions were only very slightly confusing on that. And when I say slightly confusing, because we were overthinking it, this is the fill hole, this is the, the level hole. Mm -hmm. And you're supposed to fill to the bottom of that hole. Yeah. Which, it's really simple, you put a liter in there. It's simple. That's why we have stuff on the ground, because we spilled some. Uh, the other thing is, because this wheel, oh, this lever adjusts the height. So show them down below. You see that? As I spin it, it changes this down or up, respectively. And it's really easy to spin. And what that's going to do is that'll get this. They want the minimum clearance to be one centimeter. So as you're going along, you don't want to dig into the grass and cause damage. But these things are springs, so they're clearly allowed to move back quite a bit. Mm -hmm. And so it came with at least two extra sets mm -hmm. sets yeah actually one two three there's three extra oh okay so you could redo one of those and it came with this tool which is a 46 and a 50 millimeter uh double box end wrench which is kind of cool and then inside the info tube this is one thing that's been super impressive about this brand is that when you open up the info tube Oh, look at that. There's a protective cover over that. Oh, on the safety. Yep. That's kind of interesting. I'm not sure if we're supposed to take that off or not, but. Sounds like more than info. Mm -hmm. A whole nother set of tools, <laughs> which is really cool. So it's got, inside of here, it's got a 19, 18 millimeter, 16 and 17 millimeter, 19 and 18, uh, 17 and 16 is what you use 
to either undo these inside ones or this outside one. You only have to put one bolt in on each of those units. So it comes with two of them on, you put the rest on. And then this Redlands box is in here. And this box has spare bolts like this. Yep. Okay. And I believe those are going to go on to each of the arms if needed. And there's just a handful that comes in there. So it's pretty cool that, you know, I'm not used to having equipment that comes with tools like this. It's a little bit weird to me. I mean, it's one thing to have an Allen wrench, which is ironic because they didn't include the eight millimeter <laughs> Allen wrench. That, that is about the only thing that you usually get on equipment in my experience. So that can all fit in there. Uh, one other bummer was that this thing didn't fit in there. Oh, um, yeah. I'm sure the manufacturer is kind of kicking themselves because they meant for this to fit in there. And the info tubes probably came in shorter than expected because it does fit in there. It just doesn't it's not fit long with enough. the lid. Yep. So if you knew you were only going to use this for this nut here, which is what it's used for here, I believe. See this? 46 millimeters. Which, by the way, in North America, that's kind of a weird size. But I believe that's a jam now that just holds that up and down motion. We were thinking about maybe zip tying it on. Um, but then I'm not sure that's going to hold up to the wear and tear of the rigors of uh, running. Yeah, I don't so know. So I thought about having a big zip tie and then a self tapper or something like that, just so that you can slide it out and get to it when you need it. You could cut the other side of the head off, and then you'd just be left with the correct tool. That would fit in this info too. But for now, we're just going to keep it. Hopefully, Obviously, you don't need it very often. <laughs> Obviously, I don't need a 46 millimeter uh, box end wrench for much of anything else. So normally, what I would use is just this like crappy Chinese version of a crescent wrench that's not a crescent wrench because it's made in <laughs> pittsburgh china <laughs> that did not come with this no. this thing is high quality chinese made tools this is a uh, really high quality i like this stuff way better i've been super impressed with how heavy duty everything is mm -hmm. so that'll be big enough so this here is a uh, 24 inch so you can get those at harbor freight or whatever El Cheapo store you want to go to and then you've got it for all these random weird parts that you're only going to use twice a year or whatever uh, This looks really nice the instructions um, Did not really explain how to put it together, but it was like so Simple that once we got started we literally Put these on in about five minutes and then we put those on and the only mistake I made Was I started undoing these thinking I had to undo all of them, mm -hmm. but you only have to undo the first bolt and two of them are already installed. So you can see the direction that they're supposed to go, which is really handy. And then they do have the label that shows the rotation of the 540 RPM um, PTO shaft. So it's not confusing. The other thing too is the instruction manuals are, let's just show them what they look like. Cause they're really nice. They're not necessarily really nice in terms of the um, assembly because it's just so simple i just think they assume we know how to do it but it's it's color and this is like a gosh what is that like that's like a laminated cardstock it's like card a stock. Of cardstock right yeah and then it's wire bound and stuff and they show you exploded view diagrams of every part which is really nice including the whole machine most of the information in here is specific to this machine but there are a few times where the nomenclature is interchangeable between the six arm and the 12 arm. They sell this in a six arm and a 12 arm, and we just need the six arm because the 12 arm called for more horsepower and it was just big. That's the only beef I have with this machine is that it's a little bit bigger than other options that might work. But as you can see, it's not near as big as I thought it was mm -mm. because really the biggest thing on it is the safety guard, which can be lifted up and if a guy was motivated, he could put a piece of uh, Velcro to just hold these together. And then if a guy wanted to store this and just get it out of the way, you could take off the one arm and the other arm, and that's two bolts. And you could just store them on the machine. So when it's in your off season. So really, really excited to try it. Obviously, this is the, this is the skirt that goes off to the side. We did not assemble. It's just lying on the ground right now. 
Um, but when we're ready to run that, I believe it goes that way. Yep, it goes that way. So it's gonna stick out to that side. And uh, as you can see, this uh, Indian here is not using a uh, micro or small or mini or subcompact <laughs> tractor. They're using like a full-size tractor to pull it, which is a little bit weird. And what else? That's the, the other parts manual, manual has a few like a few like operator instructions. Yeah, they talk it. about how to set up the windrows and things like that. Yeah, and, and the different ways. We they left a label on the tire. I don't think that was intentional. That was just an accident. But this, so far, I've been really impressed with the quality of build. They show you how to take apart the every component basically on the PTO shaft. The PTO shaft, interestingly enough, came in two pieces. I think that might be an international shipping thing just because you want to keep salt water and everything from getting on those inner shafts um, because they do lube those shafts. And when you slide the shafts together, you want to make sure there's no salt water in there because it can burn. <laughs> That's no joke, camera crew. Sorry. So also the other thing is on the PTO shaft. Oh God, they're so heavy when they've got a clutch on them. Look at that behemoth. Okay. This is a clutch, okay? So you don't have to worry about shear pins because there aren't shear pins, there's a clutch. So when you get a clutch, generally speaking, the PTO shaft is a lot more expensive. So that being understood, that's gonna be the next thing that we need to size up. But hopefully we won't need to do that here for a few weeks. Um, obviously we're getting a, a small homeless camps worth of walls. Yep. that we could use here for chickens. <laughs> and uh, obviously we have one more machine that's still packed up. I don't know if we showed you guys this because it was late, but we have this thing tucked away in the garage. This is one of our concerns is just like, we need another building just to store this stuff. Well, guys, it's, I mean, we have a big garage, we built a big garage. But the thing is this garage, we can have the tractor in here too. So really right now, the only thing that we can't easily fit in here is the six arm rake. And to be honest, we could probably renegotiate some of the positioning of this stuff and fit it in here. But that isn't going to stop me from building a building for it. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, uh, that's all you get for tonight. This is kind of one of those like intermediate steps. Obviously, when we go to use it, we're going to definitely show you guys how it works. You're going to get to get see how it really works, not just the way the manufacturers say it's going to work. Because if it works poorly, then you're going to know. And if it works awesome, then it's credit to the manufacturer, not to me, because I don't know anything about this stuff. Also, one other thing. I don't know if we should. Did we show them this? What? Did we show yeah. them the other tool bag? Yeah, we showed them when we, okay. when we opened it. We took it out. Yep. And then this was, we've just got, we have a little bit of assembly to do on this machine. Um but we were getting all excited about this. That's because when the clamshell, I, I call it a clamshell, it's not a clamshell, I'm sure. When this thing opens to eject one of the uh, mini bales, these all have to actuate. So that's why they're spring loaded like mm -hmm. that. So really impressed with the finish on this. Um, I think we might have gotten a bad caster though, which is a little bit weird. Um, sure, if we asked, they would send another one, but I don't really wanna wait, so I may just get a caster. Um, and then we have these chains. I don't know if they're supposed to be two chains or if they're just supposed to be one, but it looks like they're supposed to be two. So maybe it's packed in one of the spare parts bags. And there's a, a bunch of them in there. Yeah, several like boxes worth. <laughs> yeah, like like we could fill this entire shelf with just the boxes. So that'll be our next thing to do. And that just happens to have the hydraulic inline offset. Um, we'll probably try to show this machine running directly off the tractor and then we'll probably try to show it with the inline offset oh, as well yeah. just just to give you an idea of whether or not the John Deere 1025R can handle this or if you're going to need the inline offset just to make it work with a smaller tractor the other thing too is I feel like on our land we've got hills and a lot of people have hills that do hay um, a lot of people have nice flat ground but you can see this contour in the ground my concern is when you go around, especially as, as an inexperienced operator, I don't want to flip the tractor over and get killed doing this. 
So if you have that offset, it's going to bring you to almost a 90 degree angle. I mean, not quite a 90 degree angle. So my hope is that before it tips over, you're going to basically have another leg there to stop you from tipping over. Yeah. So that peace of mind is good. And it's hard to tell if you're like way down here by the trees, you can't hardly see the house. Like that's how much oh, yeah. change in elevation there is. It's just kind of all green right now, but it's a, there's some pretty good hills. So yeah. Yeah, I mean, and you can see on the side of the driveway here, that, mm -hmm. that steepness of hill is actually a little bit less than over there. Yep. So we may not be taking hay on that spot. I haven't decided yet. It kind of depends on how well this stuff works. And uh, one of the things, too, you got to think about if you try to use one of these small tractors is you got to get as much weight on it. And I told you we put fluid in the tires. Um, we used uh, like a negative 40 rated windshield wiper fluid, if I remember mm -hmm. right. And we have a video about that if you're curious it's in the playlist for the john deere 1025r and all this stuff is going to end up in that playlist too um but then we also i i had these um load cells i work on scales so i had these broken load cells that i took off and just you know people can get steel from wherever they want i put two of them over here and i put one of them over there and that was uh about 110 pounds so between the water weight and those I added about 380 pounds to this tractor, which is significant on this tractor. It's over 10% of the weight of the vehicle. And uh, obviously the loader itself is fairly heavy. It's like 1,400 pounds. So we don't have the mowing deck on there, but I don't want that in the way because I want the ground clearance, yeah. uh, especially for taking hay. We're gonna need it. So we're really excited to see all this stuff work and we hope that you guys will go through this journey with us. It's just something, you know, when you get a piece of property like this, you don't necessarily know exactly how you're going to use it and this is one of those things that we didn't know what we were going to do exactly our original intent was to take corn off of the back but what happened was the way they split these lots up we couldn't get easement well we probably could have gotten it if we asked but i didn't want to ask my neighbors to drive a combine across their yard and i didn't want to ask the person that was going to be running the combine to drive across their yard and basically it's not my yard. I don't really want to ask them for access and I don't want them to ask me for access either. So, and these guys, they spent a ton of money on a crossing and they did an earthen crossing. I did the bridge. I spent like 500 bucks on that and a lot of work. The neighbors to the south of us, they don't need to do anything because they don't have a waterway that crosses their property. But we're bisected on both sides, the north and the south, and east and west in the middle. Mm -hmm. So, and then again, on the other side of the property, we also have another waterway. So we're pretty much on an island if you include the road. Mm -hmm. So we love this property, it's beautiful, and we can't wait to take full advantage of it. The hay was just something that kind of fit really well as we started doing a ton of research when we got into this property. And um, a big part of that was, um, keeping the land use, in our case, we have a classification here in our county, so it's not just that it's an agricultural plot, but it has to also be used as such. And if it's not, then you won't be able to take advantage of the tax credits and things like this. And um, when I say tax credits, I mean, we're just paying less. We're not getting any money for it. So that's one thing to think about when you're buying property because zoning is one thing, classification is another thing. Mm -hmm. And it's different in every county. I mean, we have 99 counties in Iowa, so. Um, there's probably about 80 different ways to do it. And then a few that do it the same way. We're probably the most strict. So it's just what you get. But that all being understood, um, we'll come back with a hydraulic offset inline tow package at some point, but I'm not exactly sure when that's gonna happen. We wanna get you guys some action of this stuff working. So we got the drum mower, 54 inch drum mower. Then we're gonna rake and Ted, probably Ted first and then rake. And hopefully we can get it all done within a day or two and just let mother nature uh, bake the grass and dry it out. And then we'll run the baler and we'll show you how that works. And then hopefully we'll go ahead and throw in the hydraulic inline offset option. So we'll probably be doing just small sections to see how things work. And uh, we'll go on to the uh, more complicated stuff and get everything you know, ironed out maybe up here where it's in the front where it's easy to get to, it's nice and level. And then we'll start working the hills in the back. And uh, we hope you come along for the road. I mean, this is something we've never done. And we know you guys are gonna be here to support us and tell us what we're doing wrong, I promise. <laughs>
Thanks for watching, guys. Come back for more. Okay, guys, we are working with our rake today. I don't know if this is for Brian, personally, or if this is for you guys. We did our first big kind of official hay cutting yesterday that wasn't really a test. And so we have our rake on today. This is a six arm rake from Redlands. And we are just trying to get the settings worked out. This can rake and flip the hay over to help it dry out better. And it can also do windrows, which I believe is what they call tedding. Put it in windrows so that it's ready to bale. Um, this was, decently dry when we cut it yesterday and then it was really hot and kind of windy today so it's going to dry out really quickly but we want to get it raked and flipped over and make sure it's dry all the way through so it's definitely mixing it up stirring it flipping it Right now he has that little gray guard flipped in the up position. That's what you would use to help you make windrows. Then the hay hits that guard and stops and drops instead of just kind of getting kicked all around. But it kind of just drops and falls right now anyway. This is definitely the lightest piece of equipment we own. So he's being careful on the hills. just making its own windrows right now it's doing a nice job of getting the ground clean in this in certain spots thinks this is kind of the last pile. He started on the outside and works his way in. Or is working his way in. Oh, I just said that. Basically, with that six arm rake, we can go around and we can spread the piles that the drum mower made, and it made almost like a windrow. But then I just basically turned the piles upside down, and the only problem I'm having is I don't know what setting to put it in. And so, we're so new with this that you know, we really just honestly don't know what's the best option. 
and we have this figured out if we go to that setting then it makes a pretty nice windrow even without this guard down this guard of course spins we added a couple of pins instead of having just bolts in there bolts and uh, nuts but it's it's making huge piles which are not necessarily good uh, but we'll be able to go through and make windrows really easy if it weren't for mosquitoes you can see how nice and flat that side is well, what we want to do is we want to fling it out, but we don't want to necessarily make piles. So I don't know if I have it in the wrong setting or if I have it going down too low or what. And then we've run into one other problem, and that is on this particular kit that we bought, the pins that they included like to pop out at about the worst possible time. And so as a result, I've had this thing fall off twice. It's been in the dark once by myself on the hill. That was always fun. And then the second time I had some help getting it back on. Um, it's not the fault of this equipment, it's the fault of uh, the design of that thing. So we're going to have to figure out the best way of accomplishing keeping this thing on here safely. We could go on to the regular arm, but I just, this thing is so much easier to take stuff on and off with. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's kind of miraculous how much easier. It looks like it'd be harder, but when you do it like once, you figure out quickly that it's so much easier. Like that drum mower was the worst thing we've had to put on. Uh, that and then the tiller. The tiller is horrible. Yeah. This thing makes, actually the, the ballast box has been one of the worst. And uh, we can get that thing on in just minutes. It's kind of all bad. No, but the ballast the box ballast has been the bad. worst because you couldn't just get those arms far yeah. enough apart no matter to yep. save your life. You're always moving around a 650 pound box. So anyway, the other thoughts are with this, it's a really light piece of equipment. I can lift it up totally um, with the machine. But what happens is you end up with just a whole lot of not weight. So I have wet tires uh, with, and I have videos of that. But basically, you lose all the ballast box. You lose most of the front. I'm using forks for this whole process to simulate what it would be like to have spears. We might buy spears. I don't think we're going to buy long spears, but we'll buy the shorter spears. Because they're spear adapters. You can also buy this from Titan, too. We got this fork kit from Titan, and we love it. It works really mm -hmm. nice. But the 48-inch forks are just major overkill for this application. Um, the one thing nice about the 48 inch forks is they're heavier so it does help a little bit with any weight you get on this tractor right now you want to take um, but you can see they have spear pocket here and then there's one more here and here and then there's a two uh two inch hitch adapter too so you can uh, use it to tow trailers and things like that around of course it's a lot easier to tow from the back side um, but yeah this this comes from titan too and you can get it with 36 or 32 inch forks and then you can also get 60, 60 inch, inch forks, i believe mm -hmm. So we have the 48 inch, just a little bit overkill. But anyway, it's definitely throwing the hay. This is day two. We had a windy, we had a windy day. It's probably just, you could, I suppose you could probably bail it anyway. Um, that's speaking from my vast experience in hay like making. Days of experience. Yeah, my hours and minutes of hay making. So, but I can tell you this, those hills are kind of freaky on this machine because at least with the baler, it's huge and it's heavy and it's stout and it gives you something to hang on to. And with the drum mower, it hangs off to your right. So like, even if you're gonna, on a precarious spot, I had it catch me once last night, which, you know, one time catching you is, is one time too many, if you ask me. So in the future, I'm not sure what I'm gonna do to avoid that other than getting an excavator and flattening out my entire lot, <laughs> which is definitely no. not gonna happen. Um, but figuring out the routes is going to be good. You can see here, it almost looks like we have like a, you know, like a waterway there. Well, that's the low point. And so we've always kind of treated that as a path. And so I mow it with a zero turn. Well, in this case, letting it grow up uh, into grass, hay will be the best option. But we just, we still have to define where that is. And that's going to make my path so much better because all these turns are just killing me. Um, but you, you have to work with the contours of the land when you have hills. Like up here is just flat, so it's relatively simple. But you still have the, the runway and then you have the road and you end up with this you know acute angle and acute angle and then an obtuse angle and so making that turn is just near impossible i mean you can make the turn but you lose like three rows every time you do it so i gotta get creative and figure out how to do that better and i think really at the end of the day that front corner up there goes super fast but it's also got a really precarious spot and it's always where like the the hills crest or meet and then you've got this like weird spot where you kind of go over the top of it like this and you get really un unsettled with the machine and as you know all these all these subcompacts and compact tractors even are very top heavy so you have to be careful and i mean a rops 
a rollover protection system, it's really nice until it's making you heavy at the top and you really want the weight down at the bottom. So I've got ideas, but wheel weights are gonna cost me almost a thousand bucks, which is crazy. I just still can't hardly fathom it. But uh, you can get two sets of wheel weights that are cast iron and then you can get the plastic crappy ones, but I, I don't know if I wanna do that. I don't know if I wanna put cast iron weights on this because I just don't know that this particular tractor is worth investing a thousand dollars. Sorry. See how my life is, people. <laughs> so anyway, what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and run this little triangle over here too. And then we'll try to run the triangle up there before the sun goes down. This is the reality of working a full-time job and farming. Is that you're out swatting mosquitoes at twilight. Yay. At least when I'm on the tractor, I'm moving. So anyway, that's the Redlands, uh, the RRR 626. They also make this in a nine, uh, is it a nine arm or a 12 arm? Uh, maybe both. But either way, it's, it's two of them. So there's uh, PTO shaft splits off and then you've got two. So they counter rotate and you can, uh, you can set it to feed everything to one side or the other, or you can do it in the middle. Honestly, I'm, st I'm still trying to figure out how to do this. I thought it'd be super straightforward, but it's actually no. not at all mm -mm. straightforward. And when you adjust this thing, let's show the people, these things come up. There's not like a skirt on this one. This comes up, which is super nice, but it'd be nice if there was something to hold them up. I just have a rubber band tied on there. So this goes up and down and that raises this, this whole mechanism comes up and down. And then there's a single pin here that you can pull and then this thing moves, but it's much easier if you lift this off the ground, then it's super duper easy. You just spin it um, and you move it to the position, drop the pin back down. I was kind of hoping for a trigger mechanism. Uh, some of the other brands have that, but honestly, this was a really inexpensive piece of equipment and it's kind of doing the job right now. Making windrows, it's going to do great at. I almost feel like just showing you that because to be honest, I don't even think we need to Ted this hay. I think we just need to windrow it and then put it in the baler and sell it for profit. I don't know. What do you think, camera crew? Are you sick of doing this yet? Should I just put it in the windrow setting over there and just not screw around? I think if it was like really humid and hot, we might have to actually let it rake and dry. But it's been, it's not humid though right now. It's just, just hot. So I just can't imagine this not baling. It smells it's so weird it is I, weird. I had no idea that hay smelled so sweet and uh now i know it's the weirdest thing i mean i grew up around this stuff as a kid and i never once thought to smell hay once you and it's like weird. overwhelmingly <laughs> sweet smelling and this is just grass hay so it's not like some weird special variety although this is supposed to be pretty good hay from what we were told when we were buying the land and everything is perfect Yes. When they're telling you about it. Ah. I didn't even get it. Nope. Sorry. It's okay. All right, guys. That's all you get. I'm going to sit. I'll just switch it real quick so you can see what it's like. Um, to the other setting. Because I want to do that other. I want to do that other. I currently have it set so that I can lower it or raise it. I'm going to shut it off for the sake of the video. But basically, I have the top link adjusted so that I can raise it or lower it just with my uh, three-point adjustment. The hydraulic adjustment is so much easier. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to pull this pin if I can get it spun around right. This is another one we should tie a string on so we can get to it easy. Mm. So you pull the pin, then this thing comes up. I'm going to just go to the windrow setting. It sounds like some child's in trouble. Wait, no. It's not. What is it? Peacocks. Peacocks are weird. No, those are sirens. Oh, those are sirens. Yeah. What the heck? Maybe there's, there's like a never, child. Maybe there's a child. never hear them out here. Yeah, we do. We not hear very them. often. It's once in a while. Not like in town when we live by a fire station. Well, that's true. We did hear more than. Okay, so we'll drop this thing down. We're going to drop the skirt, guys. Better than lifting your skirt. Well, we did that the other day, too. Mm hmm So, basically, this thing just spins around it's heavier than it looks by the way um that's one thing i noticed about this indian gear is that it's all so overbuilt which is good because i'm driving it <laughs> get in there there we go uh so we're gonna see we're gonna see just how awesome this works i already know this works without putting this thing down i'm just putting this thing down for extra effort <laughs> All right, I'll just, I'll just run a short little section for you, camera crew. Okay. Are you ready? Yeah. 
So you can see it's cleaning really well where he's gone. We just don't have a super even layer of hay to kind of make a windrow out of. Goodness, something is going on around here. I'm gonna pause it and then when he gets back up to the top, we'll kind of watch him do one more pass where he's got a little bit more hay to work with. Okay, so he's coming back around. There's a little more hay right here where he's driving. So let's see this one. Definitely making a row. So we'll let him do this section. I don't know if he's gonna go back and do this whole section or if he's gonna go over to the other field. But we will come back at the end and kind of show you the whole field or two, whatever he can get done tonight with the windrows and see how it looks. It's definitely gonna make it easier to bale. When we were doing our test bales on our first field, we were just baling wherever the drum mower had cut the way that it had just fallen we left it we did that in the middle of the week and then we didn't bail until over the weekend or several days later so it just dried um and so we just kind of drove around and bailed up where it was and this will probably definitely be easier and cleaner and more consistent so we will show you what that looks like when we get done Okay, so he is about done with this section, and you can definitely see that there are rows and piles. He's just kind of working his path, but this will definitely be easier to bail up. There you can see. There's a couple spots where he pulled, kind of like pulled the window into the next row. So when you see a missing spot, it just kind of got kicked together. It's definitely little piles of hay. And lots of mosquitoes. Maybe got one more pass and then I think he's just gonna be going over the same spot twice. So it didn't it doesn't take him very long to do this section. He'll have to come out and do some of this underlying or outlying edges over here. But for the most part this whole section is done. So you can definitely tell this hill here in the back he has not messed with at all. So it's just all still flat from where the drum mower laid it over. And this is in little piles here. Oh, do you want it? Alright guys, you're coming with me. I'll 
turn the lights on for you. I've been, I don't know what I'm doing, but it's pretty cool. I've got piles all over, so I must be doing it right. Yeah, it's so cool to see it go through this process. You guys can't tell, I'll try to hold the camera still. Yeah, I'm gonna jump over this windrow, and then that's gonna kind of combine these. Basically, right now I'm splitting it, but I don't want to split it. I just want to walk it over a little bit. So I'm going to jump over the other side of the windrow. And then look what it's doing. It's it all back over to one side. So it's going to take this and it's going to move it over there and make a nice windrow for me. But the problem is, like, I haven't learned how to do any of this stuff. So I'm just learning as I go, so I'm probably making a lot of stupid mistakes, like driving on hills. You can see what it looks like over here, it's just real flat. Oh, that was a bug, I think. Yummy. So anyway, I'm going to carry this over a little bit. And then basically this last little bit of stragglers over here that I missed up the hill here, got some pointable lights, I can point those up a little bit. So you can see I can't really drive over here because it's like this, dangerous. So I'm going to just kind of go up a little deeper and then that area I'll just have to go up and down with the baler. Just get that little pinky area, it's not a big deal, I can do it. My ground floor is really low on this, but it's still cool to watch this stuff work. And you can really see it when you're on the tractor. There's no doubt about what's happening. Like this, this is my freshly cut area, but I want to try to carry this over. So I'm going to run my wheel right inside of it. And that's going to pick it up. Ready? So that's all you get. I got to keep working. All right, guys. So this is morning. Uh, morning after we raked I just wanted you guys to see see I missed a missed a few spots here I just never got this far over you can see that stuff's pretty dry anyway I might not have missed it I might have just pushed it over a little bit I'm still learning how to do this stuff so you can tell I'm dragging the ground a little bit here or it's kind of gouged the ground that's not good I don't think because that means you're gonna pull up dirt but I tried my best to get the piles in a way that my baler can pick them up. And like these piles are way too tall, which is okay. It'll suck them up like crazy. It's just, we broke up some bales when we were having problems, still learning how to get that thing to run. And we ended up uh, ripping, them, ripping them open and spreading them out so we could rebale them. As you can see this here, I missed this area. And you can see why. I'm trying to hold the camera super level and uh like here's here's level just to give you an idea i mean it's it's steep guys there's the house you can see i just basically tried to back up along the hill and unfortunately a bunch of it fell down here so i don't know if i'll just rake that up or what i should be able to just run the baler all the way back in here and just run the pickup right over the top of that but this is this is one of the red clover, that's pretty cool. I just, I can't believe how much I care about this. I didn't really think it would matter, but it's pretty cool stuff. I mean, hay is just one of those things where you take it for granted until you're involved with it, and then it's like, hey, all of a sudden I, I give a crap, <laughs> which, is, which is funny. And that's true in a lot of different aspects of life I've found. You know, it's like you get a new car and all of a sudden you realize, wow, this car is everywhere, you know, and you might not have, you might have seen them before or appreciated them, but you can see these piles. It's, it's just pretty cool. I mean, this is a product. Look how deep this is, guys. Look how deep this is. I mean, it's up to my knee. And it's dry, which is really cool. This is the second day that it's been cut. That one's not so good. <laughs> Remember, this is grass saying it's our first batch. 
you can just see it's just dry and but it still has still has the color doesn't quite snap yet and I don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing this stuff down here is in the in the shade but it'll only be in the shade and look how huge this pile is I mean I could I could lay down in that thing so this is this is really this is really cool stuff just to see how things have gone this is an easy area down here but then up there is really hard because you get up and around the hill and there's just a lot of changes in direction and so it makes it very challenging to figure out what's the best way but look how nice the rake did it just pulled everything right over and if i got a crappy windrow i just went right back over it and pulled it even further with this powered rake the six arm rake that we're using i don't know if it's the best option for us you know a ground contact rake would probably work just as good i hardly ever show you guys this but i'm gonna show you this real quick these are some of the trees we've been planting this is our old brig what a beautiful area look at this guys we've been throwing the wood down there our hope is that as the erosion happens the necessarily unavoidable erosion is just going to catch dirt we hope but you can see there's the creek way down there see the water just like babbling brook there's the old deadfall bridge but we lost one section of it so we actually cut it to make it clean and then uh i need to clear this area there's actually a couple of big logs down there and my hope was i'll just make another just jump from here down this is a peninsula so there's about a 20 foot gap between me and it and then over there it looks like looks like the steps are mostly washed out so it's probably not going to be real real productive but this is uh anyway this is this is just the halfway point in our property and not even quite halfway it's more like two-fifths of the way down but look at this stuff this is this is a small little little bit here see there's this roll here there's a roll here and that roll is scary because you get on it and you're like i mean it's not a big deal if you roll right here i mean it'd suck because you'd probably damage the tractor but then you know then there's this which just to give you an idea you know it's like it's like that and then there's this big dead tree here i gotta get that out of here i don't know if you can see the gleam from the water you see it down there that's so pretty but anyway the the reason i show you down here is just to show you the topography it's just such a big factor here and then look at this stuff it's just it's so cool and man i got really deep on this see and that's one thing i'm gonna have to learn but, you know, I'm just assuming what's going to happen is, ooh, look, animal hole. Yeah, those are fun ones to hit when you're, when you're uh, driving along and you're already precariously located. I miss this little spot here. Not a big deal. I can hit that with the baler. You see, I just kind of worked the edges, but this edge was very scary. So, and then over on the other side... We got a little bit more, but I did all this in one evening. I'm just getting ready to run for the day. And uh, something's been digging up, looking for eggs. And then these ruts, we actually had smoothed all this out. And we planted all this with this grass, this enduro seed is what they call it. And you can see I'm just trying to slow down the water. I got this grass that's planted here. That grass came from under the deck. But just trying to get all this stuff to take, it's it's challenging because you get a little bit of sun, but you get a little bit of shade. So this stuff has been doing great over here. And then you get this where the sod stops, and there's this nasty transition where the water wants to run quick. And so I don't know, maybe I'll, maybe we'd be better off to just bury a tile or something, I don't know. But this grass was here before. And you can see this didn't yield hardly anything here. But the good news is I've got all that crap out of here. See how small these piles are next to my boot. There's just not much, not much grass here. And so when I was working it, I was trying my best to figure out how to get the windrows nice and straight. So I guess I'm gonna learn really quick. The quality of hay is gonna be directly related to the quality of quality of my piles and then how much I have to rake them see 
there's just a lot of debris in there. My concern is I have kind of a steep learning curve because we're wanting to sell this stuff. And the good news is as I work this field with a powered rake, I think it's going to knock over the little hills and stuff. And the other thing you find out real quick is you find all sorts of garbage, which is really frustrating and disappointing. There's the man bridge, or there's the other bridge. That's our... I did drive the rake across. It went across just fine. So that's all I got time for this morning, but that's your quick update. So we'll probably bail this up yet tonight if we have time. And uh, we'll see how it goes in the full auto mode. We'll wrap up a bunch of it. It's going to be pretty cool. I bet we're going to fill that trailer up. And you can see there's the truck ready to go. So that's all you get for today. Thanks for watching, guys.